Hello everybody. Welcome to Organic Geology. This is the introduction to a series of videos in which I intend to present to you my theories about the origins of our planet's geography. According to Organic Geology, our planet's crust is made up of the scattered remains of petrified gigantic creatures such as dragons, snakes, reptiles, birds, and other unknown creatures that once roamed the Earth, and now form the Earth's crust and its geographical features. They shape our planet's continents, islands, mountains, rivers, caves, and lakes. Since most of these gigantic beings died in a series of cataclysms millions of years ago, the remains are not well preserved and have succumbed to the forces of erosion. Their petrified carcasses are often found piled up on top of and next to each other, which make them sometimes hard to distinguish, especially in places with a lot of vegetation. In the areas where massive destruction took place, we find a morass of body parts revealing the creature's tissues and organs, which have transformed into precious minerals and metals. Although the whole theory might at first seem too far-fetched for you, I'd like you to regard it with the eyes of a child, leaving mainstream scientific dogmas aside you will discover a new way of looking at our planet and a whole new world will open up in front of you. In the beginning of time, snakes and dragons ruled the earth. But they were not alone. There were also all kinds of reptiles and beautiful long-tailed birds in their kingdom. There were beings of gigantic proportions and lived in a time when the Earth's atmospheric conditions were very different from today. Most of these creatures died following a massive electric plasma discharge produced by an approaching planetary body that wreaked havoc on the Earth. This near collision caused worldwide earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and a global world flood which wiped most creatures of the face of the earth. Chaos and destruction reigned everywhere. All the earth's surface was covered in mud. The creatures that managed to endure the electric shock were unable to move and free themselves from the mud, so they remained stuck until they died. Only the smallest ones survived by climbing on top of the bigger ones, seeking shelter and feeding of their carcasses to be able to remain alive in a dramatically altered new environment. After some time, the waters eventually receded, which brought to light the lying corpses of these gigantic creatures scattered around every corner of the earth. However, their corpses didn't decay. As a result of both receiving a massive electric shock and being buried in the mud, they rapidly petrified. With the passage of time, this stone material hardened and formed our planet's crust and geographical features. As for the creatures that managed to survive the global catastrophe, they had to adapt to new living conditions and they gradually diminished in size. The last creatures had become infinitely smaller in the end of the days. And sadly, the ones that remained alive were merciless exterminated by mankind.
Let's have a look now at the best preserved specimens. I think you might start to see something now. All right, now we're getting closer. And you must distinguish here a head with a horn on its forehead. This should be the mouth, the neck. And here we see its forked tongue. Let's see it and examine it in detail. There it is, the tongue. All right, we're going to zoom out. You see the head again. On top of it, we see another creature. And we're going to measure it. So, from the tip of the tongue to the base of the head, that should be about 32 kilometers. This over here should be the body. Perhaps the feet, the claws, they're hard to distinguish. But well, there it is, the salamander, I call it. We have changed continent, we have headed north. And here we're going to see one of the most beautiful ones. We're going to get closer. You don't see anything yet. Now you're going to start to see something. There it is. I'm going to get closer. Okay, just turn it around a bit. There it is. It's a lizard, beautifully preferred, preserved. Look at the scales that form its skin. The eye. This is like some kind of bone or crest. We're going to go further down and see its body. But the truth is that it's difficult to distinguish because uh, it is together with many other beings. But yes, I think that this is the best specimen of all. Let us examine now this other specimen. Here it is. It is not so well preserved as the others, but well, we're going to take a look at the head now. This is the mouth. It looks as if it was smiling. These here are the horns, the neck, the eye. These are the scales that form its body. And we're going to take a closer look now. Look at the mouth. There is a, a river here. Look at the different scales. They're really nice preserved. Look at the eye. And the horns. Very nice indeed. 
which are the scales on the spine of the monster and we're going to go down this should be its back and this here I don't know what it is really if it is a wing or I don't know I think it is a wing And look, they look like feathers. Or maybe scales, perhaps. It's not so clear, as I said. It's not always easy. There's uh, quite a bit of vegetation, so... So here it is. And this, this is going to be the last one for today. Do you see it? Okay. Do you see it? this wingspan? It's incredible. We're going to measure it. From here. To here. It's uh, nearly 100 kilometers, I would say. Let's have a closer look of its head now. Do you see it here? This is its wing, the body. A horn, the nose, the jaw, the lower jaw, and this is the neck. We're going to get closer now. Look at the point of the horn, all the scales down the neck, beautifully preserved, look at all the fields, let's look at the nose, or what I think it is the nose, could be something else, well, I don't know why but it doesn't look like a Nose to me. Or perhaps yes. Look at his wings, the joints, elbows. Let's turn it around. Great. And we're going to have a closer look at the wings. All these rocky formations are just bones and scales. We're going to get closer here. Do you see what a wall? This mes measures up to 300, 400 meters high. Really nice. Here, this should be the point of the wing. And the wings coming from here. Now we're going to turn it around. And we're going to see it from another perspective and you're going to tell me is this a dragon or is this a bird if we see it from here this would be the beak of the neck bird the eye on this here should be the feathers that uh, form a kind of crest, this will be the neck, and the feathers of its body. 
But I don't know why the wings look weird to me. And I think this wing finishes here. And that up there are some other creatures. Well, but this is enough for today. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you're interested, get ready for more, because there are plenty of them coming. See you soon.